Hello, before we begin, I want to let you know that I've partnered with Bonfire to make the first ever Odin Makes t-shirts. Now these aren't just black t-shirts. These are available in multiple styles and lots of colors. Think of Bonfire as a crowdsourcing t-shirt company. For the next two weeks, they'll take all of your orders, and then when the campaign ends, they'll make all the t-shirts custom just for you and ship them out worldwide. Now you might be concerned, what if something goes wrong? Well, that's simple, they'll fix it. Odin makes shirts, available now through July 20th. Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make Ant-Man's Helmet from the new Marvel movie, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Since it's a helmet and I want it to fit, I'm gonna use my head cast that Alan Carnes made for me to pull a pattern from. Making the pattern is pretty easy. First, I cover the head in aluminum foil and then wrap that in duct tape. Now, if you do this, keep each of these to only a single layer and keep it as smooth as you can. It's much easier to draw on and then cut out. I measure where the center line is on the head so I know that each side can be as symmetrical as possible. I plan to make the pattern only on the right side of the head because I can flip the pattern pieces over to make a matching left side. I just use a permanent marker to draw on basic shapes to the back of the helmet. That part is a snug fit and is an easy shape to draw out freehand, and then I'll make the face later. It's good to know that you can use rubbing alcohol to erase marker off of duct tape so adjustments can easily be made you know, if you want to make your own patterns. I add as much detail now as I can. It'll help with keeping the shapes correct later. And I ignore the ear. This one is plaster and it doesn't move, but my ear will lay flat under the helmet. Remove the finished pattern. Cut off the parts that are not needed. I add registration marks on most of the pieces. Now these marks will help line up the parts later when all of the pieces are separated. Carefully cut out and flatten each piece. Typically at this point, I'll take these pieces, trace them on the poster board, and then use the poster board as a pattern for cutting out foam. Instead, this time, I'm gonna scan these into Photoshop. And I'm gonna make sure the circles are truly a circle and that all the pieces line up and then I'll use the printout from that to cut out my foam. All of the patterns that I made here, I put into a printout with a link in the description, so you can make your own helmet if you want to. When you cut out the pattern, make sure to notch out the registration lines and then trace them as well onto the foam. It really helps with lining up all the weird shapes. Some parts of the helmet are thicker floor mat foam and others are a thinner craft foam. I made notes on the pattern for which thickness I used, how many to cut out, and if there's a texture or not. The top of the helmet has a texture, so I plan to use the pattern that's on the floor mat for my helmet. The texture makes the pen marks really hard to see, and my silver sharpie dried out, so I just struggle with hard to see lines. I can't see them. There are tiny notches on many parts of the helmet. I just cut out about three millimeters into the thick foam and remove them. After I cut out all the pieces, I heat them up with a heat gun and use a plastic punch ladle that I made into a planisher to round out the parts. Now this helps with a better fit and reduces the stress on the glue seams versus just using flat pieces of foam. I don't want to just glue the four top textured panels together. They look separated in the movie. So I cut a strip of two millimeter craft foam and glue it to the edges that have the tiny notches. Then I can glue each piece together, getting nice, even, big panel lines. The back of the head is actually two layers of craft foam, so I glue each of the layers together and then I carefully glue them on top of each other. I use contact cement to glue the parts together. Contact cement isn't like normal glue. You paint some on each side of what you want to stick together and then you wait for it to nearly dry. Then the two pieces will stick like paper stickers do. While I wait for some parts to dry, I can work on others which help speed things up. It's nice to see that the parts fit the way they're supposed to. Even the big side circle fits in the top parts. There are many layers to the sides of the helmet, each adding detail and strength to the finished helmet. Two or three layers of thin craft foam and dried glue is actually pretty stiff and will easily keep its shape. The ears have large cone pieces, so I cut a circle the size of the base, cut the angle all the way around, and then sand down the edges to be smooth. Now I use my disc sander, but this could easily be done by hand, it just takes a lot longer. There is a circle of texture that goes around the ears. So I cut that also from format, and I cut a flat area that the ear cone will fit into, 
And then I cut the 10 millimeter floor mat down to about five millimeter, so it'll look a lot better. I glue the ear cones into the texture rings and start on more of the side panels. The panels I cut from three millimeter foam because I had it. Two millimeter foam will work as well. In fact, as you watch this build, all the gray foam is three millimeters thick and the black foam is either two millimeter or five millimeter and the floor mat is 10 millimeters thick. With all the panels cut out, I glue the sides of the head together. There's a mark on the pattern for the center of the ears, and I line these marks up as well as I can so each ring will have enough space to comfortably live. Even if I'm off a little, I can stretch the foam out just a little bit in the places that'll be hard to see. It's always good to check the fit as you go. Correct a size problem as early as you can. Looking at what I have here, it really reminds me of the head cover worn inside the spacesuits from the movie Alien. Those were some awesome spacesuits. The forehead is still from the duct tape pattern. The main front piece is going to be from floor mat, and the temples are thin craft foam so that they'll fit over the sides of the head. I cut an angle into the center line of each half of the forehead, making it steeper near the eyes. When it's glued together, you'll get that ridge down the center of the forehead. Because of the notch at the top of the forehead, I start to stick the pieces together before the contact cement is fully dry. If it was fully dry, this would actually be a really hard piece to fit correctly. I gave this a chance, and it still sticks together. I glue the temples flush to the front of the forehead, and then add that thin detail piece to the underside of the temples. I look at how the panel lines match up in frames from the trailer, and glue the temples to the sides of the head. There's a raised edge around the back of the helmet, so I cut out a strip of 5mm craft foam with one of the edges kind of on an angle. Then I glue it to the center of the helmet first, and then trim off the parts that I don't need. I add some flexible spackle to fill in the line that goes down the forehead. This is actually the only line that does not belong in the helmet. All the others are fine to be just the way they are. Later on, after the spackle dries, I can sand it down and really hide that seam. So I switched out the head cast. This one is made out of foam and doesn't have ears, so the helmet fits much better. And I was thinking about what to do next. And what occurred to me was, if I was to look closely at the picture, I could see that by using pieces I've already made and compared their sizes to pieces I haven't made, like the circle in the very front of the snout, I can get a good idea of what size everything was. So with the size in mind, I start to make the simplest piece and work from there. Now the disc in the snout is about two inches and it sits on a circle of thick foam with sanded edges, kind of like the ears. I cut some holes into the front disc and lightly cut some lines into the thick foam. When you heat the foam up with a heat gun, the lines will open up. Then glue on that disc in the front and you'll have a grill pattern. I hold some three milliliter foam up to the parts that I just made and I figure out the shape that I need in order to make the cone that's on the front of the snout. And I add the decorative notch to the front tracing a pattern piece from the top of the head. I also do this with some 5mm craft foam for the bottom, tracing the 3mm piece, but adding some to make it a little bit bigger. Each of these pieces I traced onto paper so I could have a pattern. I want to add a strip of 3mm foam across the top to thicken it up where all the face panels will go. Then I thought about the fact I'm going to need to breathe inside the helmet. Tempted to make another one of these with an opening here in addition to on the cheeks. And I bet that would be good because this wasn't that hard to make. Using the paper patterns I had copied, I cut out all the parts again, but this time I cut a hole in the thick disc and glued some aluminum window screen between the front discs. Now I have a grill I can breathe through. And I added a little piece of poster board under that notch to make a thin flat bottom. All right, now, <laughs> now that I got a new mouthpiece I can actually breathe out of. I can see the relative sizes of the bridge of the nose to that front circle, so I start there. Each piece of the face, and there's gonna be four, will go from the bottom of the eye just down to the ridge over the mouthpiece. I figure it out looking at the top of the eyes as a gauge for different sizes. I cut out each one and glue them in place. Plus, there's a little ridge under the eye, which is good because this will help stiffen the eye socket. Looking at the corner of the eye, I get the placement that I want and glue the face to the sides of the helmet. Well, all right. 
I make a cheek panel that goes on the inside and covers down to the jawline. And there are two small circles or tubes in the cheeks near the snout. Something that would be the right size is that dried up silver sharpie. So I cut the pen into little pieces, cut out the holes for them to fit into, and then super glue them in place. I need the big jawline parts, or the mandibles, and I know that I want to layer up lots of foam to do it. I start with a strip of 5mm foam, because that's the same thickness as the black cone on the snout, and I glue that down. Then I trim puzzle pieces off of the floor mat edge and glue it on top of the 5mm foam, with an extra part starting to go up to the ears. I cut out little strips of 3mm and 5mm foam and glue them on so the mandible can step down to the front of the snout. The antenna attach to the mandible and are made up of what looks like layers of stuff. I start with a piece of 10 millimeter foam for the center and I add on some three millimeter pieces, one for the top and a pair stacked in the bottom. Then glue on some two millimeter craft foam to hide the texture on the back and that'll also add some stability. I was happy to see that the antenna was gonna be stiff enough to not need a wire and added another little strip of two millimeter on the back just to make it a little bit stronger. I also add some more 2mm foam on the front for more panel lines and cut a small piece of 5mm foam to fit it to the mandible. I also cut a notch into that cone ear piece so the antenna will fit better. The underside of the jaw is covered and a simple right triangle of 2mm foam with the corner rounded off will do nicely. I also cut a curve so it will fit my neck and glue it on. I add some little strips for detail on the underside and I can start working on the lenses. I hold a piece of poster board behind the eyes to trace the eye socket, and I cut out a 5mm foam frame or gasket. He has it in the movie anyway. So I got the grommet that I want for the lens, and I think it's going to work. But what I really need is the red plastic lens itself. There's a couple of ways that we could do this. You could uh, just go ahead and cut up the cover off of like a, a clear red report. You could maybe cut up a CD cover. What I'm going to use is a red plastic party bowl. First, I cover the plastic with painter's tape so it doesn't get all scratched up. And then I can easily draw my pattern shape onto the bowl. Now this plastic really is not that strong. You can't just cut it because it splits really easily. But I can use a small flush cut saw. All the cuts of the lenses are straight and there are no inside angles in the lenses, so they shouldn't crack. I could cut these out on my bandsaw as well, but I haven't really needed power tools yet, so why start now? Peel the tape off and super glue the frames to the edges of my new red lenses. I still need to sand down the flexible spackle on the forehead and then I can use an X-Acto knife and the heat gun to make some small panel lines on the cheeks and the mandibles. That is an amazingly tight fit. Alrighty. Let's go spray paint this, not while it's on my head. I use black plastic dip as a primer coat. It seals the foam and bonds most of the seams. Plus, it's flexible and works with spray paint. The first coat of paint is gunmetal, and this is an automotive spray paint, and it dries very quickly. I plan to just paint on all the bright silver with craft acrylics, and there's a lot of it to do. Most parts take two coats to cover fully, and I brush it on in the same direction the whole time. By always going in the same direction on each piece, I think it minimizes streaks and eliminates the crisscross of crazy brush marks. I just look at pictures from the trailer to see what parts need to be silver. The textured parts of the helmet are nearly black, so I mix a little silver with some black and paint over all the textured parts. I use a little silver rub and buff paint to help the forehead shine and to highlight the gunmetal parts. Rub and buff is a really nice wax-based paint and a little bit goes a long way. Then I seal the helmet with a gloss coat sealer. Once the gloss coat dried, I started to cover everything up in tape so I could add the red stripes. Now there are two big red stripes on the forehead and two more smaller stripes on each cheek and the mandible. I'm going to use the same metallic red paint that I used on Captain America's shield. And this painter's tape that I have has a really softer sticky side. It's made for fresh paint. It can just barely stick to itself. Some quick blasts of the red metallic paint and I can peel off the blue tape. I actually peel it right away because I don't want the tape bonding to the helmet at all. I super glue on the antenna and I try to cut off some of the paint so I'm only gluing foam to foam. The glue bond will be stronger that way. 
There's a small piece of black frame on the bridge of the nose. So I cut out a little piece of five millimeter and glue it in. And this is the first time that the nose has been connected on the helmet. Now I get to carefully glue in the lenses. And I really don't want to get glue on the lens itself because I can't clean it off if I do. I cut the black foam of the frames so it sits right up against the 10 millimeter forehead piece. And then it can go behind all of the three millimeter face pieces. And the lenses are glued on from the bridge of the nose, over the brow, and down the sides. But the front behind the cheeks actually has a gap. And this was not planned, but it'll help with breathing, so I'm okay with it. I want a little bit of shadows and weathering on the bright silver, just to darken the panel lines. So I water down some black acrylic paints and paint it on the areas that I want darker. Force it into the corners and on the panel lines. Then wipe off the excess with a paper towel. Once the water dries, I can use a flat dull coat on the black textured parts, and the helmet is done. All the materials I used to make this project, I picked up locally, and I put a part list in the description. <laughs> and here's my Ant-Man helmet. This is really cool. I was happy that I was able to make this thing without power tools and almost completely out of foam. Now, the lenses, they're not optically clear. It's just a punch bowl. There's a little bit of distortion. But this was an easy way to make what otherwise could have been a really tough piece. And if you like, there's a pattern for this helmet in the description so you can print it out and make one of your own. Now, I know that there are lots of different ways that you can either repaint or even make your own Ant-Man helmet. But this is how Odin makes. I wanna say thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers. And if you wanna jump in and help support new videos, please check out my Patreon page. If you have ideas for something for me to make, please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. You had it. It was right there in your hand. Why did you drop the helmet?